Uh, hello. Today our topic is uh, seamless migration from novel network to neutral in eBay production. And my name is Chen Yuan. Uh, I'm from eBay Cloud Team in Shanghai. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Han and I'm, I'm very glad to be here, share our story with you. Thank you. Okay. So this is our agenda today. First, uh, we will give an overview of eBay Cloud environment. And next, we will give details of migration steps. Uh, I, I will introduce the control plane part. And Han will uh, give the data plane migration and post-migration introduction. And finally, we will do a demo about uh, this uh, novel network to neutral migration. OK. Uh, this figure shows our original frozen network environment. And uh, this right side is uh, OpenStack controller nodes. These are quite normal. And from this left side uh, are all novel computer nodes. Uh, in eBay, we also call them hypervisor nodes. As we configured them as novel network hype, um, multi host mode, so you can see that there is a network, novel network process running in each computer node. And also, there are several DNS mass queue process are running in the computer nodes. They provide the DHCP service for all the local VMs. And uh, all the VMs are running in the bridge mode. And uh, uh, in Fosen, so they are the Linux bridge are used. In our configuration, there are two interfaces for each VM. Each of them connect to one Linux bridge. So this is a Fosen environment. And this figure shows our target uh, environment uh, uh, of the Havana. And all the, uh, from this right side, all the OpenStack components shall be migrated to Havana. And the uh, Neutron server is running. Uh, in addition, we also have uh, SDN controllers there. Uh, we are using VMware's NSX as our SDN controller. And uh, for this uh, novel computer side, we can see that uh, there is no novel network running, no DNS mass queue. And also, Linux Bridge is not there. Instead, we install the OpenV switch. And all the existing VMs are still using the uh, bridge mode. But this bridge interface all migrate to OpenV switch uh, bridge interface. So this is our target. And uh, here, uh, I will give some description about uh, how do we and do the control plane migration. Uh, first, we still keep all frozen OpenStack controller nodes there. Meanwhile, we will set up uh, uh, Havana OpenStack controller nodes, and they including Keystone, Nova, Glance, Neutron, uh, RabbitMQ, MySQL, this, all this stuff there. And then we will create another set of nodes for NSX controller. And uh, for the NSX part, uh, we need to first create transport zoom. The transport zoom uh, is uh, one concept uh, um, from NSX. Actually, it's uh, just for underlayer network connectivity. And uh, so actually, each, each uh, hypervisor interface must belong to one transport zoom so that uh, the SDN controller can understand the topology of the whole underlayer network. So that's why we must create this uh, transport zoom there. And also we must do the uh, hypervisor registration to the NSS controller. Uh, this is uh, the first step. And next step, uh, we must do the DB migration. And for Keystone, Glance, Nova, uh, this is uh, quite simple. We just uh, export the database from Fosen and import them into the Havana and do the DB sync. Next part is uh, for Neutron. As we know that there is no Neutron DB in the Fosen part, but we still need to migrate all our network configuration from Fosen to Havana. 
So we need to read the uh, network uh, information actually from our uh, not only DB table networks and fixed IP tables. Then we call uh, Neutron's net create, subnet create these APIs to import this information to Neutron DB. So then actually this has done all network and subnet creation from uh, Forza to Havana. So after network and creation, uh, next step uh, we need to do port creation. Uh, one thing must to be noticed is that uh, as the VM has already running, the tap device is there. So we, uh, when we do the port creation, we must not touch anything in this hypervisor. We don't need to create a second. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> So we don't need to create a second tap device. So for this purpose, uh, we actually we enable fake driver in our computer for this purpose. Then we start uh, port creation. For port creation, we get uh, the MAC address and the IP information from the Fortran database and then we get the network ID and the subnet ID from Neutron database we just created. And after we get this port information, we call Neutron API create port and then attach this port to the VM. So this port information has been in Neutron DB and the novel DB, and also this information are in the NSX controller. And we can see that as the fake driver is there, so actually uh, OpenStack uh, controller actually doesn't do anything in the hypervisor side. Hypervisor side still keep the same. Okay, uh, last step is about the secret group. Uh, in Neutron, actually it's an uh, NSX um, plugin. It will create a default secret group with self-reference UUID for ingress. And the purpose is to only let uh, same tenant uh, traffic in. But uh, as we, we are migrating from Forza to Neutron, we need the uh, uh, compliant uh, previous network uh, firewall rules. So we don't need the limit, uh, don't have need to have this limitation. That's why we update the security group for, for each part. So we only have this simple rules to allow our traffic there. And uh, this is uh, all part for control plane part. Now we go to data plane. Hand, please. Thanks, Chen Yuan. Uh, OK. Uh, for data plane, uh, data plane migration, it has to be done for each hypervisor node. So for this is one hypervisor as an example. So for a hypervisor node, data plane migration means uh, moving the live traffic for the for all the VMs running on this hypervisor node, to uh, from the Linux bridge to the Open switch. So, uh, how many of you uh, have been using Open switch? Could you raise your hand? Okay, great. So, uh, our goal is uh, moving to Open switch so that we can use SDN controller to control the, all the flows. That's our goal, and the requirement now is, or the key point is uh, seamless. So our topic is seamless. Seamless means uh, we need to migrate uh, flows. Uh, we need to ensure the connection downtime as short as possible, so that uh, applications running on these VMs are least impacted. That's our requirement. So the first step, we just do the preparation uh, stuffs. We install the OBS package, and uh, now we can just uh, remove the VM interface from the uh, Linux bridge. So if you ask for the command, it's just a PR control the Linux bridge command. Pretty straightforward, and now the connection for all the VMs has been lost. Uh, please note that this, in this picture, it's just one VNet interface, but actually it means 
uh, for simplicity, uh, but it means for all the VMs, each VM have a type device connected to the Linux bridge, right? So uh, you can start counting, so see how, how fast we can restore the collections. And we just renamed uh, the name because we are moving from Fosum to Havana. It's a harmonic name convention, so we just renamed, uh, renamed the uh, interface name. And then we can just uh, remove the physical interface from the Linux bridge. And now we can remove the Linux bridge. And it's kind of module. And then we just start the uh, OBS service. So you might ask why, why we didn't start the uh, OBS service before uh, cut the collection. It's because in our, in our environment doing this migration, we are using uh, Red Hat, the hypervisor running Hat, Red Hat. Uh, we have Ubuntu in other environments, but for this task, it's Red Hat. And we have two versions. The old version is Red Hat 6.3 and the uh, new version is 6.4. So part of Hypervisor is running 6.3, others are running 6.4. But for 6.3, there's a limitation. Uh, OpenMate switch and uh, Linux bridge cannot be running at the same time on the same Hypervisor because of a uh, Linux kernel API confliction. So that's why we uh, do it. So, so this is for 6.3. This is the uh, worst, worst case, right? But for 6.04, we just uh, start OVS service before cutting the collection. Okay, now we just set a, a create the integration bridge. The in integration bridge behind is uh, supposed to be controlled by the SDN controller. And the BR0 uh, is corresponding to the physical interface. In our real environment, there was uh, two physical inter interfaces, but for simplicity, it's only one listed. And then we we just uh, attach the physical inter interface to the BR zero. So for the hypervisor, the collection is now restored. Uh, uh, sorry, just moving the host IP and also the routing entry for the default route. Okay, so next step is add the VM tap device back to the OVS uh, switch. So what happened now? Is the connection restored? Okay, yeah. Why? Because, yeah, right. So the no one can just send or receive traffic until the SDN controller says so, but now we don't have a controller. So the next step is that the SDN controller, in our case, it's NSX. So what happens in this step? Firstly, a uh, hypervisor uh, requests uh, through OVSDB request to the SDN controller, and uh, as mentioned by Chen Yuan in the control plane migration, we already created the mic, uh, already registered hypervisor to the NSX, and we already created uh, bridged collectors. So uh, NSX controller now knows that this hypervisor is up, and we are just going to configure it uh, with the, you can see this, Collection between the BR int and BR zero, it's a patch interface being created by, it's instructed by the controller. So that the bridged collection can go through. And also, if you, if you notice that there's a Newton port UID when we add the VM interface, and this is a very critical information. So uh, also in the control plane migration, we already created Newton port and the port UID information has been populated to the SDN controller uh, through the NSX Neutron plugin. Uh, it's in the NSX database, and now we have the same information, Neutron port UID, uh, attached to the OVS. So OVS has already populated information through OVS DB to the SDN controller. So SDN controller knows, okay, so this port is alive on this hypervisor, and it's just uh, calculate what kind of flows, 
to be pushed down to this hypervisor for this port. So now for all the VM ports on these hypervisor nodes, they have flows. Then traffic connections are restored. So how long did it take? Maybe 10 minutes? <laughs> okay, right, we, we are using scripts. So in our real, uh, real environment, our production environment, uh, it's about three to five seconds. I think it's uh, okay for most of our applications. And uh, it really depends on the, uh, how fast the NSX controllers react into the OVS DB connection and how fast it just uh, calculates the port, uh, the rules for the port and, and your, your connection latency between the uh, hypervisor <laughs> and your SDN controller. That's, uh, uh, that's the factors uh, for, the, for, for the speed. Uh, maybe I, I should also mention that this, this is for the bridge mode, right? But this solution, the same solution can be applied just for overlay. So if it's overlay, uh, in control plane, you may just uh, set up the, uh, not the bridge connector, but the tunnel connector, uh, STT connector or VX9 collector, what, uh, whatever. So, and this step, when OBS DB connection is requested, SDN controller will just inform, instruct the hypervisor to set up the SDT tunnels or VX9 tunnels. So the steps are very similar. And after this, we are not done yet. So we need to prepare, be prepared for the, uh, for example, the network service restart on the host or host restart. So we need to configure the if config interface uh, configuration files so that the OVS information is there, next uh, service restart and uh, OVS, uh, OVS uh, bridge will be, service will be started for, the, for, for this interface. And if you're using Ubuntu, just a, a different loca location, but it's similar. And uh, you need to be prepared for the next VM reboot. So this is a libverse thing. What we did was just moving the interfaces from Linux bridge to the OVS bridge without telling the libvert, right? But, but libvert is the one supposed to manage that. So we just need to update this configuration file. The standard interface is uh, verse defined. Uh, you, you update the interface, uh, the, the F XML configuration file with the uh, virtual port type, open with switch parameters, uh, port, Newton port UID. But this is, is not enough because uh, libvert configuration takes effect when you start the VM next time. Uh, so for the runtime information, it's not still not updated, even even if you execute this command versus define. So our solution is just like a hack. Uh, we found uh, uh, just uh, updates the uh, runtime XML file under this var run libvert kimu directory, and you can just uh, restart libvert service, and it will take effect. Without this step, what will happen? So, um, when you shut down the VM, libvert will not know to clean up the do the cleanup job for the OVS port. So the OVS port information is not cleaned up, and next time when you start up, when you are trying to start the VM with libvert, there will be a confliction and you will fail. That's why we did this, and this is very important for us. Uh, okay, so rollback. This is very important. Uh, you don't want to be surprised. So no matter how confident you are, you need to be always be prepared because you never know what happens. Uh, maybe it's just uh, drifting a hypervisor with some drifting configuration or some configuration you never expected, or maybe something bad happens to when you're trying to start the OVS service. You don't know. So the, the key is 
just be prepared. And uh, fortunately, and the steps we described before just can be reverted step by step. Uh, it means you, you can just detach the VM interface from the OVS and shut down the OVS and bring up Linux Bridge and attach interface to the Linux Bridge again. That's all the work, but you need to make this all automatic. You need to detect if the migration is uh, ongoing. You keep pinning and you keep uh, checking which step you are, like those things. And so yeah, you, you don't have to be panic when something happens. Yeah, so we are all adults, right? Okay, so Chen Yuan will give you a, re a recap and... Okay, thanks, Sam. <laughs> so um, before the demo, uh, let me just uh, uh, summarize all our steps in one figure. And uh, here, <coughs> this is an old environment with Frozen. So first, uh, okay, we shut down the Frozen network and Frozen novel computer. Then start uh, the novel computer, also with fake driver first. Then control plane part uh, and the port creation will be done. Then install the open vSwitch as Han has described. So next part is uh, data plane. Remove the interface. And then finally destroy the bridge interface. And then create the open vSwitch bridge interface. Attach to the tap device and then attach to ETH0. And uh, set messages to an SX controller and then those BI intent BI0 are connected, finalized. And uh, at this time, the traffic is uh, working now. And finally, we need to update uh, some files. Uh, so prepare for next time VM reboot or hypervisor reboot so not break the system. So actually, uh, our major migration code is uh, just to cover all this part. Uh, as uh, database uh, migration is not uh, covered here as uh, uh, database is just a one-time work. So when it's done, all other hypervisors migration actually don't need to do it again. So here, our script just focusing on migrate one hypervisor here. Okay, so, sorry, one question. Uh, Fred DHCP, you mean the for the? Uh, no, no, no VLAN mode. Actually, um, for for the, it's uh, a novel network multi host mode, and I think uh, the DHCP, and uh, at the very beginning, you can see. The flat DHCP. Yeah, Fred DHCP at the very beginning as. Uh, DNS mass queue is running on each hypervisor, so it's flat DHCP mode, I think. Okay, so uh, let's go to demo. Uh, actually, this environment, uh, we've already done the control plane part. The database, uh, database has been migrated. So for the novel DB has migrated to neutral. So in this window, uh, this command line, this window command line is for Fozen. So we can just uh, novel list. Okay, we can see there's uh, one virtual machine running on the hypervisor and uh, okay. Its IP address is uh, 10.244.248.115. And this is, as this is uh, frozen, so we can see that uh, neutron service is not there. OK, as we have already do the DB migration, so we can see here. Uh, 
the novel list can still work in here, um, but uh, please be noticed that uh, network information is empty, as we don't do port creation and no, no, no um, port uh, attachment here. So, uh, okay, neutron port is uh, also not created, so this is empty. Okay, so so this uh, this node uh, NC003 is the hypervisor node. So we can see that. Sorry. And the one KVM instance is running here. And it's using the Linux bridge mode. So the tap device name is uh, VNet0. And uh, okay, we just uh, pin, pin the VM here. Okay, uh, so VM can be pinned from outside. We keep it there. Now we start uh, the migration uh, code as uh, just uh, uh, same as the figure descript. Now we start the migration script. And uh, first uh, is the control plane part, uh, so it needs to get the port information from uh, from Forza and uh, then do this uh, port create uh, work in Neutron. And then go to the hypervisor, do uh, bridge interface, detach, and also do this uh, IP routing, this migration work. And here is the upload the open vSwitch package and the install open vSwitch package. And uh, just notice this uh, pin to VM, so the VMs is still pingable, so you can notice the, how long the traffic is broken. And maybe still need to wait some time. It's installed the packages. Yeah, okay. Nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can see if we can successful. Now I think, uh, okay, I think everything is passed. And this is uh, this is six dot four, so we don't do the uh, yeah. Removal now this is done, so uh, I think the ping is still working. So very short. You don't you don't even notice how long the traffic is broken. As it's six dot four, so it's uh, more easy than six dot three. So almost no traffic are broken. As uh, this uh, SDN environment is also simple, as we only have one VM. Yeah, so and it's in our lab. It's not. This is not. Uh, not the real production, but this is a yeah. lab uh, demo for demo. And here we can see OVS. Okay, they actually all open V switch interface are created, and uh, the uh, tap device. Yeah, the tap device has been renamed and uh, attached to the BI int and the VM is still working. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Uh, yeah, please. Uh, do you have your code hosted Sorry? Code. Uh, code, um, code is still internal. <laughs> But if you want, uh, maybe you can just post it from uh, to uh, GitHub or something. We really need to discuss with this company. I think it would be okay. Okay, we we will upload the slides to somewhere and uh, publish. Yeah, sure. Yeah, please.
Novo Computer, ah, Novo Computer actually has been, um, for Havana version has been done before. Oh, so yeah. Your, your stuff before migration. Yeah, 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 yeah. I approve that. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry? Rough key. How many? Yeah. Uh, hypervisors. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this actually, um, we do this verification in eBay production uh, in several nodes uh, currently, just uh, running several nodes in one rack, as uh, uh, the whole migration plan actually is postponed as the uh, shopping season is coming. So eBay stop this whole pro migration process. We will do after the shopping season. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, this has been verified in the production environment, so everything goes smoothly. So. Yeah, and the environment for this is uh, uh, nearly 1,000 hypervisors. Yeah. Yes. Sorry? Uh, Mac address, uh, uh, yeah. Mac address actually is, uh, is a bridge mode, so when when the actually in the frozen time when start uh, the MAC address is, has been allocated and during the migration we reuse the same MAC address. Yeah, actually we don't change anything for the type device. We just detach from the Linux bridge and attach to the OVS bridge. Yeah. So the, yeah. Okay. So. That's all for today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.